members of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. The one and only Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. The call is free at 888-825-5225, and some say it's worth exactly what you pay for it. All right, let's go to Michael in Topeka, Kansas to kick off this hour. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good, good. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, so I've uh, I appreciate all the insight you've given me over the years. You've you've really helped me in my in my personal life and just to make you know more sound decisions. So thank you, thank you for that. Well, thank you. Hey, so I I had some friends who they reached out to me last year and they said, hey, we've got this business and you know we we're we're kind of struggling. We bought it and it it didn't really have the sales that we thought it would and. They were always trying to get me to go and, and sell for them, and I was saying, "Hey, you know, I've got a full time gig. It's not something that I could really fully commit to. You know, I, you know, if you could, you know, send me your last year's P and L, I'll I'll try to see what I can do. But it, uh, you know, it didn't it didn't look too good. I mean, in their first year, they I think they netted only, you know, ten thousand dollars, and that was after paying some employees. So it wasn't doing very good. And I, you know, these were good friends of mine and, you know, they'd helped me out when I was in kind of a bind one time. So I said, Hey, you know, let me, let me see what I can do towards the end of this year. And I'll make some cold calls around the area and see what I can do to help generate some sales. Well, now they're starting to, they're starting to, you know, net roughly, you know, anywhere from six to $8,000 in a month. So they're, they're doing a lot better now. And they're still asking me like, Hey man, we'd really like to see if you could, you could come in and, and do this full time for us. And, you know, I just don't really even know how to, how to structure a deal. You know, it's, it's a couple guys and another individual and one of the individuals wants to get out and, you know, they've got $110,000 in debt. So, you know, I, I'm saying, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to invest in this or absorb any debt, but you know, I could do some sales. You can't really work sure as a contractor. You can't just work as a, as contracted labor for them. Well, and that's, that's kind of what I propose, but you know, that's something I've never done. You know, I've, Again, I have, I have a full-time gig, and it was something where I didn't really invest that much time. I mean, I made like three or four phone calls and was able to generate some some sales in a very short period of time. Really just did this, you know, kind of what do you What do you make, Michael, now? Currently? Yeah. Um, roughly, you know, 100, 150, mm-hmm. 160. And you, and you sell now for a living? Yes, I do. You, you don't like the company you work for? I do. I, you know, I, I, they've treated me very well and, and I like them. And I, I, I think, it, have, I think know, it was very kind of, kind of you to help your friends. Um, there's a fur difference in, um, throwing them a lifeline and getting in the boat with them. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to stay out of this boat. It sounds like it's sinking. Is that what you're, yeah, okay. You, you right. got one guy wanting to get out. They didn't know how to turn a profit till they got you to make sales. And now they want you to come in there and make sales and be an owner with them. Um, there's just uh, there's more can go wrong with this whole scenario. This isn't like two guys that were successful and said, "Come join us." These are two guys that couldn't do it and said, "Come join us." Yeah, That's yeah, a, and that, you know, it's yeah. not a. I mean, if they weren't your friends, you would be laughing. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, and that's and that's been kind of the, the challenge. Is you know, I'm trying to explain to them, you know, say, hey, here's here's the sales product. They're not really sales guys, you know. They're, yeah. They own another side business. It was just if you want to keep helping them, different. you know, and keep your gig and keep helping them to get, you know, until they can get a good salesperson hired, maybe you even help them train that guy and they pay you one offs for doing that. That's fine. But don't, don't go get in this boat. It's leaking. How would you, how would you, yeah, I appreciate that. Can if it were, if it were me, I would just set up some kind of commission for yeah. every sale that I make, say that this is the percentage I want and you're just structured, you know, on 1099 and. And it's just easy, just like that. And for that, I'll make yeah. sales, and I'll also help you as your friend train your first salesperson if you'll get them hired. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not. But I'm not well, coming over there. I appreciate. It. I mean, that was the direction I was thinking of yeah. it as well. You know, I've got some was, really. I've yeah. got. I've got one really good friend who's a banker. Can you imagine if I wanted to? No, I'm not going with him. Right. He's a banker. <laughs> I like him anyway, but he's a banker. 
You know, no, right. I'm not doing that. Just because he's my friend. I'm, no, I mean, there, there's a difference here. I mean, what are you supposed to do with your life? And, you know, it does not align. You know, the only thing pulling you here is your need to be good to your friends, mm -hmm. which makes you a good guy. But don't don't let that pull you into this boat. Yeah, definitely not in any ownership capacity, as it sounded like they're trying to get you in there. I would just, yeah. Yes, I'll take a commission for every sale I yeah. make. And I'd put a I'd probably start with a really short time limit on that too. Hey, let's try this for a couple of months and if it goes well, we can extend it. Just be very clear with whatever terms you write. Yeah. Put it in writing. We'll do a part time gig and mm -hmm. I'll go over here as a side hustle and help you guys get this thing up and running until you get somebody hired and then I'll help you train them. I'll I'll bust it for ninety days. During that ninety days you gotta get somebody hired. During the next ninety days I'll train them and then I'm out of here and you guys are gonna sail this boat by yourself. Love it. That's a plan. Good, good, good point. Point, Jade. Very good point. So good rule of thumb is this, and Michael's coming at this a little bit differently, but in Entree Leadership, we run into this all the time. And I'm now the new host of the Entree Leadership podcast, mm -hmm. if you haven't heard. So it's a small business podcast answering questions. So jump in on that. But one of the things we tell folks in that world all the time is, and I see it with small business. I mean, and guys, well, cat, girls do it too. I, ga, gals do it too. But uh, the way I always see it is a couple, about three guys are sitting around having a beer, and then they decide they're going to open a something together. Oh, gosh. And this is the and every one of them are dumber than a rock. <laughs> And the idea is dumber than a rock. But by God, we're going to do it together. And their wives are telling yeah. them, please don't do this. Please don't yeah, do this. With, with guys, it's we're going to go in the construction business or we're going to do whatever. Ladies, open a dress shop. And these are just guaranteed ways to end up not friends at the end of it, to end up losing money at the end of it. And we tell people all the time in those situations, the only ship that won't sail is a partnership. Stay out of that one. Okay. That one sinks. And so if you, if, if, if you really do want to go in business with your friend, one of you own it and the other one work for them. If you're really going to do it. So, um, Michael, the only way I would even consider moving over there is if you bought this business that's, that's losing and horrible for a dollar and the guys that can't run it get to be your new employees. Um, but I wouldn't do that either, by the way, in this case. But um, but that's the only way I'm going to do it. I'm going to be in control of the situation mm -hmm. because there's all these things that we call the D's that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, divorce. Yes. Drug use. Default. Disability death when any of these huh. happen to your partner you get to work with your partner's spouse after that mm. yikes so he gets a divorce to, to a boy start something that's successful they get a divorce all of a sudden what you're working with your buddy's ex-wife because she got the business in the divorce yeah this is woo yeah see what i mean yeah it's that's scary stuff bad and, and plan the contracts are never it's never in writing very well even there's always this writing, gray area death will undo it that's even true. if it's in writing this is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to health care. But there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America, with debt payments and now with inflation, stealing more and more of your paycheck. We know a lot of folks are scared out there. And uh, you, you hear the rumors of banks collapsing and you hear all these things and you you can't, you know, hardly afford your groceries. We understand. You know what? You shouldn't have to live that way. When Sharon and I went broke, we finally looked in the mirror and said, that's it. 
I've had it. I'm not going to be like this anymore. And, um, well, if you're ready to do some new things, if you want different results, you have to do different things, by the way. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expect a different result, that's called the definition of insanity, right? So you need to try something new. If you want a different result, if you don't like the way the the, the Jade made famous brownies this week on uh, Instagram, I saw her Instagram. If you don't like the way the brownies turned out, you change the recipe, Woo. right? And so, hey, you want to change the recipe? It's time to get into Financial Peace University, our nine-lesson course that'll teach you how to beat debt and build wealth. Nearly 10 million people have taken Financial Peace University, and uh, that means that we're the largest and best-known personal finance, successful personal finance class in America. Hello. So check it out, Financial Peace University at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU, RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Now, you've started a class, right? That's right. You're, you're coordinating a class, uh, a virtual class with like a thousand people in it. That's right. We're four four lessons in. You're doing like a fast, uh, faster than, you're doing more than yes. one a week. That's right. Most of the time when you hear about it, it's a nine-week course. We fast-tracked it. A lot of that was just to test out what that can be like in five weeks. And man, so you're these doing people, nine weeks in five. Nine weeks so in five two, weeks. So two lessons a week. Yep. Okay. And these people are cutting up credit cards, Dave. Well, that's what they're supposed they're to do. They're changing their lives. Yep. The, the point is they're not scared to make those changes. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. I mean, like a thousand people cutting up credit cards on Zoom. Yep. This is fun. Yep. They're raising their hand to say, I want to come on camera and cut up my credit cards. I love it. I love it. <laughs> on air plastectomies. On air. We <laughs> used to do those. We used to do plastectomies a long time ago, and it would like be like the most creative way. And people would yeah. go on the air with their AR-15 and shoot them. Uh, <laughs> they would go on the air with their uh, with their chipper, yeah. the log chipper. Put, yes. Brrr, yes. You know, on the air with any you know blenders. We we I destroyed a lot that. of blenders in America back then. Well, yeah, because now yeah, cause they're Because you can metal. never use it again after you run a credit card in it. So, because uh, it, you know, it's toxic, right? <laughs> I, I think the credit so card, ways. the credit card companies are onto us, Dave, because they're they're making a metal now. The yeah. Me and well, they're hard to they're hard to cut ten through. Ten snips, ten snips. That'll do it. <laughs> Get out the old uh, grinder. Oh yeah, put them put it in the meat grinder. Yeah, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna make metal ones, we're gonna have to involve either firearms or power tools. Love it. Yeah. I'm here for it, Dave. Yeah, I'm in for this. This works. <laughs> or both. Firearms both. and power tools. This is yes. Fun. Now yes. I'm having fun. All right. <laughs> Paul's with us in Indianapolis. Hey, Paul. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. How can we help? Hey, uh, so I am in, uh, let's see here, baby step four, five, six. Uh, I've got a friend who, uh, great man, really close friend, hardworking guy, uh, he's going to buy a flip house. He's going to flip it. And he was, he's got an investor, but he was wanting me to maybe chip in. And, and so here's where I'm at is I'm struggling to, you know, really get in gear and pay off my house. Um, and so I've got this extra money sitting there and I'd like to invest it. Uh, I'm not going to invest it with him this time around. Cause it just seems like the numbers don't make sense. Uh, but I've got, I guess, two questions. One would be, is me investing in his little project, is that me putting him in debt? And would that change our, like, really close friendship? And should I just avoid that altogether? Or is that an investment? And then my, my backup question would be, convince me to pay off my house to, instead of putting twenty grand towards his little flip, uh, putting it on my house. Hmm. Well, we'll start with that one. If your house was paid for, and your friend came and said, hey, go get a mortgage, and we'll use that to do a flip with, what would you say? <laughs> uh, i tell him he, yeah. can, he can jump off that house. Yeah, <laughs> go yeah. fly a kite. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, the same exactly. thing. This yeah. is the same thing. We just reversed it, right? So exact same principle. Um, it's just, it's just you know, the money's laying there, and you had not put it on the house yet. Um, so it needs to go on the house. Now, on the other thing, um, how are you all structuring the deal? Are you going to be partners? Like you're an owner with him? No, no. It, it's it's kind of like, hey, just give me this money, and in six months or maybe a year, I'll give you ten percent back. And I'm looking at, I'm like twenty grand, ten percent. Like you're gonna, I'm gonna make two thousand dollars on this, and it just seems so open ended that I'm not interested. But I think yeah. I, I know he'll get good at this, and he'll do it more and more, and then he'll come back to me in the future. And it's like, well, wait a minute, is there an underlying principle that I should say no from principle? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Well, you are loaning him money. You're the more you're the yeah. banker. You're the banker. Yeah. If you want to be in the banking business with your friend, that's you can do that. I don't. I don't. There but, you go. I mean, that's what it is. It's a loan. He's not asking you to give him the money. It's not a gift. Mm-hmm. He's going to repay the loan plus ten percent at his convenience when it sells. <sighs> and I don't want to be the bank. That's the loan. It's a loan. Pressure. I don't want to. Can I tell you? Make, can I tell you a quick story, Paul? I have fam- I have a family member who has that relationship with a lot of their her friends. And the relationship yeah. is, I'm giving you this money, you're going to go invest in property, or I'm giving you this money, and you're going to go do this. And sometimes it takes longer for these things to pay out if they pay out. And there has been times where we've gone out to dinner, and maybe we're at that person's restaurant that she invested in. And instead of saying, hey, do you want to go eat at my friend's restaurant? The language is, hey, let's go eat here. He owes me anyway. Oh, That's, this is my good friend. And do you see what I'm saying? Now yeah. it's a transaction between them. She's thinking, oh, he owes me money. I'm just going to go eat here for free. After all, I invested here. So it changes it's the way. Unsaid, unspoken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can, and he can say, give me the money all he wants, but he means loan me the money. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's the actual business arrangement that you're coming to. And if you put that in writing, and you loaned him money, and he gave you ten percent back, um, yeah, you're. If you, oh, the principle is yes, the borrower is slave to the lender. You just change the relationship. That's the principle you're violating. The second principle you're violating is dumber than crap <laughs> to make only ten percent on twenty grand tied up for an I indefinite know, right? period of time in a high risk scenario with a guy who does not have a proven track record. I would dump it in mutual funds six thousand times before mm-hmm. I would put it in that. Good um, point. If you want to do flips, go do flips. If he's going to give you fifty percent of the profits and there's six thousand dollars of profit and you put in twenty grand, now we got something to the numbers actually give me a reason to think. But ten percent no thank you no thank you no deal ding 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 ding. walk 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 hey guys if you want to help us out we would appreciate some help and a matter of fact a bunch of you have been doing it because our numbers are way up on the podcast way up on our ratings thank you so share this show if you watch it on youtube or you listen to it as a podcast or you listen to it on talk radio or tbn tell people about it whether it's through a link just click the little linky thing and do it if it's a podcast right subscribe to the show if you're doing it as a podcast or youtube follow subscribe whatever it is in that particular genre jump in there and 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 make it to where it regularly shows up both of these things really help the algorithm And the other thing that helps put it forward and lets people see it that never even heard of us before is if you rate it with five stars. Now, we don't really need any one-star ratings. Your mother said if you ain't got anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. So just stay away. If you want to troll, troll something else. But, uh, yeah, seriously, we need high five-star ratings, and we need follows, and we need shares. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it doesn't cost you anything. If you like what you hear, tell people about it. Uh, Sharon and I went to the preview of this movie that uh, just came out about last week. We went to the preview about th- four weeks ago, the Jesus Revolution movie. So good. It is so absolutely good. fabulous. And see, that's what you do. What you and I just did. Yeah. You, when you see something great, you we share talked it. about it. Mm-hmm. I just shared it. Jesus Revolution. Go watch the Go movie. Go watch. It's it so is good. Hand, it's very well done. Mm-hmm. Very well acted. Incredible story arc. Very well written. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the actual story and the story behind the story are all fabulous. Very good. Jesus Revolution. Go watch it. It's incredible. See, that's what you do. You, you didn't like say something, anything you bad. You share it. You give them a five-star review. Yes. We just gave them five stars just then. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. 
You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Church Hill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Richard and Angela are with us. Hey, guys. How are you? Oh, Hi. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Wonderful. Where do you guys live? Uh, Stockton, California. <laughs> All right. Good to have you guys. Welcome. And how much debt have you paid off? We paid off $310,525. Love it. Ooh, yes. yes. How long did this take? It took 33 months. Wow. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, started off at uh, 173000 and went up to 131000 Two hundred and thirty-one. No, one hundred and thirty-one. Up, I uh, went from one seventy-three down to one thirty-one. No, let me repeat that. Am I got it backwards? Seventy-three thousand. Oh, from seventy-three oh, okay. to one thirty. Oh, I misunderstood. My yeah. fault. Okay, cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am a resource specialist at a community college, mm -hmm. and I'm a uh, material store supervisor to the state of California. I recently retired. Oh, congratulations. Cool. Thank you. Yes. All right. So you put $10,000 a month towards this average. Now, you must have had some money you put through. The, you threw at this. What kind of debt was this you paid off? Oh, it was everything. <laughs> it was um, dental bills, credit card bills, um, home remodeling bills, and it was two houses. Whoa. Whoa. Your home included? Yes. All right. Wow. So you're a hundred percent debt free. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. We are looking at weird people, especially yeah. in California. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Way to go, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so three almost three years ago. Yes. yes. Some kind of a switch flipped. What happened that got you guys on this Ramsey stuff? Well, our journey with Dave Ramsey started well before that. It actually started in 2006, 2007. Uh, we took Financial Peace University with our church. Mm -hmm. And after we completed the class, we were kind of doing Ramsey-ish. Mm -hmm. um, we had a rental home that we owed less money on than we owed on our credit cards. So we kind of decided to flip the switch a little bit, and we were going to pay that house off first and then pay everything else off. Mm -hmm. Well, lo and behold, 2008 and nine came, and I got laid off. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of changed things quite a bit. Um, I took another job working part-time, full-time. And um, 10 years later, several jobs later, you know, here we are. Mm. Well, I, I would like to when say. When did you lean in and stop being ish 33 <laughs> months well, ago? Well, we leaned in and stopped being ish um, when we got the house paid off. But we went back to using credit cards and such when I got laid off. So we got all that taken care of. And then, you know, we thought we were doing okay. And uh, we took your class again at another church. And we decided this is what we want to do. We want to go all oh, in. Oh, so you really, you really got like a D in the first class. And so you had to go back and repeat the class <laughs> yes. and get your A. Yeah. Right. Okay. Ooh, sometimes it's like that, Dave. Yes. Sometimes it takes a couple of times to make it stick. Am I right? Right. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad it did ah. stick. Hey, what are these houses worth? I'm just curious. Uh, well, one is worth uh, about five hundred and eighty thousand, uh -huh. and the other one is worth three hundred and fifty thousand. So, are you guys like baby step millionaires? Yes, we Let's are. Go. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Um, this plan is so good, even if you have to, it, it works. I mean, yes. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very uh, cool. 
I, I would like to say uh, I, I, I retired because I got injured on the job, and then I started getting sick, and I st- started having what you call TIAs. Mm. Uh, well, the last one put me in the hospital, Ooh. and and so that that kind of solidified it with us to just retire because mm-hmm. I had to get some shoulder surgery and some back surgery and just the nerves in my back and neck is all all messed up so it was just best for me to retire so I was able to retire and we were able to get out of debt. Sounds wow. like a lot of years of really hard work. Yes, 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 yes. it was. Yes. So 33 months ago we had a plan. We decided that we were going to sell our primary house in Stockton and we were going to move into that paid off rental property in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And that place had been a rental for well over 25 years. So we were going to remodel it and we were just going to turn it into our dream home. We were really going to make it ours. So we put our house up for sale. And we got connected with the bad realtor and some shoddy contractors. Mm-hmm. So we had to sue. Mm-hmm. We had to sue one of the contractors. Uh-oh. Yes, we had to sue them. But before we put it up for sale, our real estate agent, she came in and she wanted us to make a few changes. She said, oh, I think you need to remodel the kitchen. The house will sell much faster if you remodel the kitchen. And you need new carpet <laughs> upstairs. You need bathroom <laughs> floors. Change your blinds. And we did all of that. Uh-huh. And guess how we paid for it? Ca- I hope cash. Please tell <laughs> <No>. me. <laughs> With that credit card. No! With one of the 11 credit cards that we paid off. So our plan was to put all of this on credit and then pay it off, you know, when we sold the house. Then the kitchen's in and she (laughs) likes the house again and she decides to stay. Well, the house... Uh, we had a person who wanted to buy. They were a first-time home buyer. Uh, it went into escrow, and the deal fell through. So, in the meantime, you know, we're starting to pack, and we're excited about moving and getting the contractor started. And they really wanted to start soon because... It was, you know, the beginning stages of COVID. They had that transportation issue going on where, you know, stuff was just sitting on docks and such. And so uh, our contractor said, well, you know, we don't know if we're going to be able to get this in three months. So, Mm. you know, we need to sign this deal now. So we did. Uh, Bottom line, we ended up telling them we no longer needed their services. They threatened to sue us. Mm -hmm. We had to get a lawyer Mm -hmm. to basically threaten to sue them and so on. And so by the grace of God, we were able to get out of this contract. And my husband said, we need to sell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will say that um, um, when I first heard your program, I had just bought a brand new truck. And it seemed like everything you said was, sell the truck, sell the truck, <laughs> sell the truck. We love that oh, truck. I love the truck. Oh. It was, and, and, yes. and so I did. I, now that I, you are completely free, how's it feel? Well, it feels great. It really does. But it just really took a long time to get there. Yeah. You know, we, we went through so much, particularly with this contractor, yeah. because, you know, probably now about, I don't know, 20 something months into this, you know, we're standing in front of a house that looks like it's been totally abandoned, mm. boarded up windows, boarded up doors. And, you know, the contractor kept telling us, oh, the windows are coming in, the doors are coming in. But bottom line, mm. we're standing there in front of a house that used to make $2,000 a month in income that we would use to pay on our other house. Angela, I'm going to short circuit you because yes. you're going to miss your debt-free screen. Oh, I, no. don't, okay. I don't want to do that. You're free now. Thank That's you. what matters. Woo! The good news is you made the corner. I apologize for interrupting you. I'd love to hear the whole story. But Richard and Angela Stockton, California, baby steps, millionaires, 311 paid off in 33 months, making 73 to 131. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three, two, two, one. one. We're We're debt-free.
Quite a journey to get there, oh, but man. worth the trip. Worth the worth journey. The trip. I know, that's right. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're a new listener and you're still trying to figure out what all of these code words we use around Ramsey are, like baby steps or debt snowballs or all that, hey, jump on the website at RamseySolutions.com. Click the Get Started button. Uh, It's all completely free, and it will show you exactly where you are financially in the baby steps, start to teach you the vernacular, the things we're talking about around here, and how we're showing people this, because a little bit of... Sometimes people that have been listening to this show for 15 years call in and we talk to them. And if you really hadn't been around, you don't even know what we all just said. And so we want to to get you in the loop on that. we got a bunch of new listeners and new viewers out there. And uh, we want to be able to help you. RamseySolutions.com slash uh, dot com. It's a free service. Click the Get Started button. Sarah is in San Francisco. Hey, Sarah, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, it's an honor to speak to you both today. You too. What's um, up? I, had a, um, I have a question. So I have a couple brokerage accounts with more than 500000 in them, and I was wondering if I needed to worry about SIPC limits of protection um, and break up those accounts between different brokerage firms. Um, The SIPC, I mean, you've got the money invested in stocks or bonds or mutual funds, right? Yes. Okay. So if that brokerage uh, company went broke, it doesn't, you don't lose your money. This is not like a bank account. Okay. Because you own, you own, what have you got it in? Stocks or what? What's, What's it in? Um, yeah, mutual funds, um, b- a few bonds. Okay, you um, have an actual account that owns, I mean, you own a bond. You own uh, a mutual fund. You own mutual fund shares. So if the company that is giving you access to those shares goes broke, you don't lose the shares. You just you just have to find a different way to access them. So the SIPC has more to do with if they're fraudulent, they steal your money or something like that. But if you actually have statements showing, you know, account numbers and ownership positions in these things, you actually own something. The way you would lose your money is if the companies that you owned went broke, <laughs> like the stock that you owned went broke. Does that make sense? Okay. Like if you had yes, Apple stock and Apple reason. went out of so business. I'll make, a, I'll make it up. I'll just pretend. Let's say, you, let's say your brokerage accounts are with Merrill Lynch. If Merrill Lynch goes broke, you don't lose your money. Because you're not invested in Merrill Lynch. They're just the access portal through which you are handling your investments. It's different than if you put your money in a bank, the bank takes possession of that money. They, I mean, you have an account there, but Mm -hmm. they're not a broker. They are owning that money, and they can screw that up, as happened in your neighborhood last week, Sarah. Which what got yeah, you thinking about this? this yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's what got you thinking it's about this. Question. But yeah, it's a di- good question. It's a different uh, situation. So no, I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. I have all of my investments with one brokerage account, one broker, one brokerage firm, one advisor, one of our smart investor pros. Okay, uh, I don't need seven, and, and it's millions, and I, I don't need seven different people and to get SIPC protection because I actually own mutual funds in XYZ mutual fund. And I, I actually own something there. And so that's the difference. And so that's a good way of reminding everybody this. You don't make money when I used to work for a guy a thousand years ago. He said, don't be a loaner, be an owner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when you put money in a bank, you're loaning them your money and they're paying you interest. Not much, but they're paying you interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you 
put money into an investment, you're an owner. Yeah. So if you want to make money, you need to be an owner, not a loner. There's never any money with putting your money in a bank. And so um, apparently even owning the bank is bad. But <laughs> Well, you know, I, I get where her question is coming from. I was watching the Today Show this morning and they were going over what you should do with your money. And they were saying, you know, if you have over $500,000 in the bank, you know, you're only covered up to 250. So to break it up and all these things. And I'm thinking to myself, who's why do you have just $500,000 just sitting in the bank? Like, go invest that money. Exactly. You, you shouldn't have. <laughs> go, just so, go invest it. And uh, we talked about this on the air yesterday, but we'll just segue into it for a second you need to understand a lot of people are, are panicking right now and if you yeah. didn't hear us talk about this yesterday over that uh one bank collapsing actually and then the fdic stepped in and uh scored some other banks in a similar situation two more probably gonna see a couple more go mm -hmm. down the fdic mm -hmm. probably gonna take them over but these are not banks that are uh your neighborhood bank right okay uh 88 percent of the depositors had more than 250000 in there. This was a bank full of money from tech startups, venture mm -hmm. capitalists, hedge fund, the uber rich. It's in Silicon Valley. Okay. So this was not your grandmother's CD right. at the bank. This is not what was going on over there. It was a completely different scenario. And so the typical bank would be the other way around. They would have like 88% would be covered. Right. M the 88% of their deposits are 60% or 65% of their deposits are under $250,000. Mm -hmm. And so they've got full FDIC coverage for all of their depositors uh, in, that are, you know, that fall into that. Now, again, I, in my local bank, I have over. 250 with mm -hmm. our businesses and lot mm -hmm. well over that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried about my local bank. I did not pull money out because the banking system right. is collapsing. <laughs> it's not. Okay. It's just not. So you're, you're going to be okay. Calm down and don't rush out and buy gold. <laughs> And don't ru us, don't rush out and buy crypto. Help okay? us, Dave. And this is just calm your butt down. So that's not her. Not, not I mean, she's asking yeah, a reasonable she, yeah. question because she's got this right in her face. It's in her neighborhood, but and it's a different kind of a question. It's a great question, by the way, sir. But the uh, yeah, but but, but overall, you know. overall, folks, the 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 whole and the other thing that happened from this was the bond market. It they were they were liquidating a bunch of bonds and the bond market uh, the uh, surged causing rates to go down simultaneously mortgage rates went down mm -hmm. so if you're going to buy a house and you want to lock in a mortgage <laughs> call churchill mortgage today, today and get your mortgage locked in before it goes back up by the end of the freaking week and this stuff calms down good point so you might save as much as a half of a percent this hey, week let's go if you move on this fast uh and, and so if you're thinking about buying a house in the next few months that you can get like 90 day locks and stuff with your mortgage company like churchill mortgage that we recommend mm -hmm. go do that it changes everything Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sergio's in Dallas. Sergio, what's up? Hey, thank you so much for taking my call, Dave. Sure. How can we help? Uh, well, long story short, um, my wife's grandparents, which are still alive, they uh, kind of gifted her their home, but they're kind of they're selling it too, but it's going to be taken out of her inheritance. And we... We took it. It's in a different town and everything, but we took it. We're actually in the process of moving in right now. And uh, my question is, what to do with our existing house right now? You have a mortgage on it? Yes, I'll sell it. About 50000 Sell it. Okay. You don't have enough money to be in the rental business. You don't have the money to pay for that house. The other house okay. paid for that Granny gave you? Yes. So now you're debt free. Yeah. There you go. If you were 100% debt free, would you would you think if you call me up and said, "Hey Jade, I want to buy a rental property and go in debt." What would Jade tell you? Uh, I'm guessing what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. No, you wouldn't do it. I don't think that you would search the country to find your house as the perfect rental house. So that's the best way to look at it. Get rid of it, right. live in the house that you're in debt free. That's exciting stuff. Where are the grandparents yeah, now? It's, it's, it's a big blessing. They're in a nursing home. Oh, okay. It's very sad. We're actually in the process of, we're having an estate, so right now, mm -hmm. selling all their stuff. And, it's and the house has been sad. deeded to you and your wife? 
Uh, not officially, but yes, that's that's. No, been. honey, there is no. There's not only one. It's a yes or a no. Get the deed. <laughs> if the deed no. is not yours, the house is not yours. Yeah, you, you haven't got it. The real estate doesn't transact on a handshake, son. Go get the right. deed signed now, or don't move in this house. This is family crap that's getting ready to go sideways, buddy. You're going to have a problem here. Get the deed in your name. There is no sort of kind of in real estate. That's not how it works. You're going to find out the hard way. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving in storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show. This is the place where we help people get out of debt, build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for hanging out with us. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Starting off this hour is Patrick in Fresno, California. Hi, Patrick. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Here's my question. So I've got over a quarter of a billion in my retirement account, and over the years I've seen it go up and down. And after hearing the news about uh, what what went down uh, this weekend, you know, with the two banks in the Silicon Valley, um, I'm wondering if I should – take money out of my retirement and pay off my credit card debt. That's my, my major debt is my credit card followed by my home. My, my car is paid for. So it's basically those two debts uh, that I'm working with. What do you, you have know, your money? Home, in, what do you have your money invested in? In, um, you know, when I left the County, I had it in their retirement plan, 401 and 457. In mutual funds. Correct. What's that got to do with the bank? Uh, well, last time that all happened in 2008, uh, I just shut the door on that book because it looks so bad. You know, is it going to fall and I'm going to see this money diminish? Would it be better off to, to use the assets I have now, pay off my debt, and that way the money I earn is mine. I can put it in the bank and invest it. How old are you? I am going to be 60 this year. Mm. I, I want you to pay off your credit card debt, but not for that reason. How much credit card debt do you have? About uh, $27,000. And I've got 20, yeah, 23 uh, to pay off my home. 23,000 pays off your home. Correct. And we're we're on a good uh, uh, pace to do that, you know, I'll have that done. How much money do you years. have not counting your retirement? Uh, and not a whole lot, you know, we have about 5 grand in the bank. What's your uh, household income? Uh, about uh, it fluctuates between uh, sixty and seventy. Okay. All right. And your money is currently all in your four hundred one k, and you still work for the county. Uh, no, I don't. Oh, you've no, retired. I moved on. Uh, yeah, about the two and a half years ago, and when you know when it started to hit the fan, I go, you know what? Uh, I just got hit up for a position, and so I'm working part time right now. All right, and what do you? What is your household income today? It's about uh, sixty-six. Okay, um, I w- I'm with Jade. I would pay off your house, and I would pay off your credit cards if you cut up your credit cards and if you get on a budget, because you've been really, uh, really, you've been plan, really yeah. sloppy with money. The two good things you've done, you've done a good job paying down your mortgage, and you've done a good job uh, building up some retirement. Uh, but your monthly management of money is not good. It's chaotic and out of control, and you're going to end up back in credit card debt. It, it just because you pay them off doesn't fix it if you don't stay under right, control. Right. Okay. Is that right? All right. That's that's the goal is to get it all under control and and stop that. You know, stop bleeding out. So to yeah, speak, but the credit you know, card debt is the symptom. It's not the problem. Okay, and so we, you know. 
Yes, we can pay off the credit cards, but they will grow back if you don't get yourself on a system, on a budget monthly. Are you married? Yes. And working with your wife, the two of you sitting down, and we have a spending plan where every dollar has a name, and we don't spend more than we make because we're not in Congress. What's your? Uh, yes, my wife, thank God, uh, has that under control. She does a great job for me. What's your full nest That's egg good. combined? Because you mentioned the 250000 in your retirement accounts. What what other money do you have in retirement? Does your wife have money in retirement, too? Uh, not really, no. Uh, during my career, she raised the kids and stood home, and, you know, that, that was our, our way of doing uh, I just want to make sure now, that uh-huh. you—I just want to make sure that you working full-time or working part-time is the right choice right now with what you have in retirement. Oh, right. That's something I'm I'm looking at changing you know, picking up more work, maybe not with, with this position that I'm that I'm currently in, but picking up uh, work elsewhere. Because if all you have is the 250, I, that's not really a, am I going to or not? It's a, I, I must. That's not enough to retire on. Oh, right, right. I, I got that. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm not so uh, ready to you, retire you, just yet. So Patrick, here's yeah. what we would tell you. We tell you to do several things. And if you don't do all of them, then any one of them might be wrong. Okay. So number one, re-engage a full-time career. Number two, build a budget with your spouse that the two of you are both participating in and get your emergency fund built up from 5,000 to three to six months of expenses. Then number three, Uh yes, pull 50,000 out and be a hundred percent debt free, which will help that budget and build that savings up because now you don't have any payments, but I don't want it to grow back. And number four, get out the credit cards tonight and cut them all up. Have a plastectomy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. Uh, no, no, uh, no. Uh, I've threatened to do that before. Okay, no, I'm not threatening. Yeah, I, I, this, is, this is you need to change your lifetime because if you don't, okay. you're going to end up at 65 with two hundred thousand dollars, and you will have forty thousand dollars in credit card debt because mm-hmm. it'll grow right, back. Right, right, no, no, no. It'll grow back. That's not the path I want to go down. I know. I don't yeah. want you to go down that. So, and then the last thing is this: um, do not jump in and out of investments based on what you hear on the news, ever. Okay. Uh, the, the stock market is not going to crash. The banking system is not going to crash. This is a completely different kind of bank, a completely different kind of scenario than 2008. And so I am not pulling one dime out of my mutual funds today or nor did I last week, nor will I next week. Mm-hmm. And I'm 62. I'm older than you. And I don't have much time left. Yeah. But um, but with the time I have, I'm going to continue to invest. Okay. So you get, you know, here it's serious. Stay yeah. in your investments. Quit making your moves based on the news. You and, can't let the, the color of the ticker tape on the news and the music that they use denote your investing strategy. When the ticker is is red and it says breaking news and the music is dun 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 dun, dun you know, yeah. and it just gets your heart rate up and you start sweating and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. You can't let that. You know, they don't ever do that when it's green. I know, right? They don't have like happy music. No, they don't. Breaking news. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, nobody does that. That never happens. It's always breaking news. The market's down and you're going to die of a tornado. If it bleeds. It leads and it leads people to do dumb stuff and it leads them to do things that are not good for them in the long haul. And so we've just got to these are the times where you lock in. And if you just hold. Oh, by the way, I got to hit one more thing. Hit it. Like 2008. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did in Come 2008. On, Dave. Stock market went from 13,000 Dow to 6,500 Dow. You know how much I took out? None. You know what it did after that? It went to 35, 38,000 from 6,500. You know what a million dollars does when it goes up from 6,000 to 30,000? It becomes $5 million. Nobody talked about that, Dave. Because I didn't get out. I rode the roller coaster. So I kind of hope it does what 2008 did. Okay. Because I'll be getting in. I know this. It's on sale. This is the Ramsey Show. (laughs) If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. 
but something as simple as custom window coverings from blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save up to 50% off everything site-wide. Visit Blinds.com today to learn more. Marshall Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. The Ramsey Show is sponsored by Neighborly. Uh, they Anything from repairs to maintenance to remodeling, stuff like Mr. Rooter, Mr. Electric, uh, Molly Maid, you know these names. They're all part of the Neighborly family. So go to Neighborly.com and get local experts and home service providers to take care of you, and they'll schedule a service today. Today's question of the day comes from Jeremy in the Baby Steps Millionaires group. You can find that on Facebook. Book. I'm 47 years old. If I plan to retire early, like say 50 to 55, should I be maxing out my 401k or funding more investments that I can pull from before I turn 60? My Roth is fully funded each year in January. It's a really good question. Um, you know, I have more questions for you, Jeremy. I would want to know if you have any debt. I'd want to know if your house is paid off. Uh, those are the things that I would prioritize first is making sure that you're out of debt, making sure that you are going from baby step four and five and six. And then if you're in baby step seven, you could do um, additional funding into different investments. Um, it says that he's funding, fully funding his Roth in January every year. It sounds like he's got extra money. If I were you, I would work to pay that house off. And then from then on, if you wanted to throw money into, I guess, a taxable brokerage or something that you could get into before you hit 59 and a half, I'm not mad at that. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, the, the term that people use is bridge investing to make a bridge from 55 to 59 and a half. And so we'll have this other lump in good good mutual fund investments to get there. But you're right. That's a baby step seven activity. Uh -huh. So if he is at baby step seven and he's debt free, house and everything, has his emergency fund, maxing out his retirement, can I also, what else can I do? Or can I even slow down retirement a little bit and throw some at the bridge because I'm going to need something mm -hmm. to eat mm -hmm. on? and build up a pile of, like you said, just taxable mutual funds. What you're looking for there are what are called low turnover mutual funds, and they're mutual funds that don't sell the stocks inside of them very often, and so it does not act the, activate the gains for taxes. Mm. So you don't pay taxes on gains as they occur unless you sell it. And uh, that way, it's basically a tax-deferred investment. Like, a good place to do that kind of a thing it's a no-brainer. It's an S&P 500 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, it's going to have – I was looking at one that they had a 2.5% turnover ratio, which means that 97.5% uh, of the stocks do not sell in a year. So 97.5% of the gains approximately are not going to be taxed in a year. Mm. So you would that's a low turnover. Creates the It's not taxed until you finally do sell it. Would the fees on something like that be lower as well since it's not – since the funds aren't being swapped out as much? Yeah, there will be. I mean, you can buy it as a no-load. You could also get it through your SmartVestor Pro. Mm -hmm. If you got a SmartVestor Pro managed in your portfolio, they can just throw that in with what they're doing. It's not a problem at all. Um, I use a lot of, uh, of low-turnover mutual fund mm -hmm. investing to park money in until I get ready to buy my next piece of real estate. That's what I do with it. So. Love it. But, uh, uh, and it's, you know, uh, I, can, I can handle the... 
uh, volatility uh, mathematically and emotionally mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. of the stock market going up or down. And so that, but that's at a different place. So that's a baby step four thing. You're looking for a br- bridge investing. Do not start that, as Jade said, until you're debt free, though. That's right. Angela is with us in Boston. Hey, Angela, how are you? I'm great, Dave. Hi, Jade. I'm thrilled to talk to you guys. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you. How can we help? All right. So I'm cleaning up stupid. Um, I came to the Baby Steps movie two years ago, but before that, um, I bought my first home and it was, you know, by the Baby Steps standards, well out of my pay, you know, my pay. So I'm cleaning up what I did. I did a, um, I had a loan modification um, that was performed. I had an FHA loan. And what was done was a partial claim by HUD. So it's a interest-free um, loan of $100,000 that was removed from my mortgage balance to reduce my payments um, when I fell behind, um, just to keep me in the home. So where I am now is I've, I've paid off about $40,000 on Baby Step 2. I'll be finished with Baby Step 2 in about three months. And I'm just looking ahead to see... Um, if I should be paying off this partial claim, even though it's tied to my mortgage and baby step six, or should I be pulling that in since I have that ability to, to pay it down, um, through HUD. What's your household, what's your household income? Sure. I make, um, between 138 and 140. I would leave, I would leave it as a baby step six. Okay. Because I would treat it like okay. it's a second mortgage or a home equity loan, and we do not pay those off if they're more than half your annual income. Okay. Until you get to baby step Great. six. Now, when you get to baby step six, you're going to work your way through it. But you said it's an interest-free loan. They took a they carved a piece of the mortgage off, set it to the side, and put a moratorium on it with no interest, right? Yes. Well, I'm yes. in no hurry on that one. Okay. I do want would to get you, rid of it, but I'm in no hurry. Would I... Okay. Would I prioritize the interest-bearing portion of the loan before the interest-free? How would I? If they allow it, recommend? I don't know what their I don't do. know what their rules are on that kind of a modification. But if they allow it, yeah, you'd pay off your. It'd be the last one you paid off of the two. Okay. But uh, but I'm not going to keep it like a pet either. I mean, it, but we're we're going to okay. set over at baby step six, and we're not going to be here. Eight years from now, and still be going. Ten years from now, still be going. No, I'm not going to pay it off. It's right. no interest. No, I do want to get rid of it. But right. um, I, and they may not allow you to do that uh, additional principal reduction on your first mortgage until you get that modification paid. Yeah, it yes, would be lo- it would be condition. logical that they don't allow it. Okay, but who knows with HUD? I mean, you know, logic is a federal government. Yeah. Logic has nothing to do with this. Exactly. Yeah, the the partial portion isn't due until the first mortgage is either paid off or the home is sold. And so now if, if you pay off the first mortgage, is it due in full instantly, or you have to begin paying on it? Yes, it's due in full instantly. So I'm oh, trying so you to can't match pay up the, the first mortgage. Yeah, you can't pay the first mortgage off then because you're going to have a balloon of a hundred mm-hmm. grand looking at you. It would. I they they allow partial, so you can almost just throw money at it to reduce it, but it can't. So yeah, like you could get it down, get it down mortgage. to twenty thousand bucks or something, and then uh-huh. reach over and knock okay. off the hundred, right? Okay. But Perfect. that's all at baby step six. Okay. Thank you so when much. When did you do this? Oh, Dave. Um, now, when did you do the modification? Between, this was in 2018, 2019, I'm sorry, twenty nineteen. And the basis that they gave you this this relief was based on what? Um, hardship, uh, was between jobs and the, the criteria was, um, my current mortgage balance and payments, um, did not match my, my income in between, you know, the, those jobs. So there was a trial period, you know, after I got my new job that I could pay the new, um, you know, reduced and modified, modified loan. So it was a hardship application. Mm-hmm. And how long did it take you to get the hardship application through? I haven't seen one of these in decades. I'm really interested in this because it hasn't happened much. You pulled off something pretty yeah. unusual. <laughs> it was a blessing. You know, I, I did stupid at the beginning, but it definitely was a blessing to keep me in my home. Um, how, ma- how, how much so hassle was it to push this through? I would say I was about three payments behind going into four. So it was a loss mitigation through my, my mortgage company. Um, there was maybe a month of application with documentation, hardship documentation, yeah. proof of income, 
Um, and then there was a three-month trial period where they modified and basically paused my old mortgage, and I had to do a trial payment based on the new modification um, monthly payment. You had to prove you could um, make the new payment. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, that was proven, we went into basically a new closing with an FHA. Wow. And I closed on my modified um, loan. And, H- and HUD took it off the books of yeah. your old mortgage company, too. It's not sitting huh. at your old mortgage yes. company, is it? Yes. So if you look at yeah. my, my um, yeah, my oh, what I owe, it, it's removed from even my credit. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's sitting over at HUD. HUD, interesting. HUD bought the, they bought the loan back and redid it. That's amazing. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. You did a, that's a, that's a feat well, of strength. Well, good job. <laughs> good job. Keep your house and uh-huh. get the mess cleaned up now. Wow. Wow. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today on the debt-free stage in the Ramsey Solutions lobby. Luis and Delia are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, Hi Welcome. Hi Where do you Hi. live? We live in Spring Houston, Tex- Texas. Spring, Houston, Texas, yeah. Houston, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? Oh, gosh. Uh, we paid 132685 All right. Way to go. How long did this take? Uh, around five years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Well, we started with 64000 mm-hmm. and our current income is uh, one thirty-five. All right. Good. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a mechanical engineer. Mm-hmm. And I'm a high school teacher. Okay. So what kind of debt was the one thirty-three? Uh, it was credit cards. We had 10 credit cards all maxed out, and we had car loans and student loans. Wow. Okay. Normal. So tell us about this five-year journey. That's a long journey. Yeah, we, when we got married, we just started just thinking that that was normal, that, you know, you pay, you, you always have a car loan, you always, you know, just use your credit cards and shuffling credit cards. And it got to the point where we were just, you know, got to the cashier and had to flip credit cards. So our marriage was in a desperate mode, really. So we uh, learned from our church, Grace Woodlands, and they promoted the, the class. So I was like, let's take it. Let's, we had to invest the money, obviously. Uh, and uh, Well, you signed us up. I was not on board at the beginning because it was about numbers. And I just, I'm not a fan. Uh, you know, I don't like math. <laughs> um, and um, we, he took me to the class. And I was hooked on the very first class. I was just like, okay, we're doing this. But, um, and then we started seeing that our marriage was improving because we were communicating a lot. We were sat down to do our uh, budget meeting 
and uh, uh, we we got excited after our first credit card was paid off, and then we kept just kept going and going and going. And uh, I picked up like extra tutorials at work and like extra duties. They always paid something extra for that, and we just went gazelle intensity. Wow, I love that. So you get to the the register. And you're trying one credit card, that one's not working. You're going to the next one, that one's not working. Yes. And that was that that breakthrough moment that you guys said, yes. we're, we're changing our life. Yes. So what was the hardest part? I think the hardest part was talking, saying, talking saying no to myself. <laughs> when we're, we, um, I'm the free spirit and he's a nerd. Okay. Um, and um, the voice of Dave Ramsey on my brain, it was like, <laughs> do you want it or do you need it? And until this point, like we transitioned that to our, our daughters and... Uh, what, that was the hardest part, saying no to myself and wait until we got the cash mm. for it. What was it about the first class that hooked you that you thought, I mean, okay, maybe I can do this? First of all, you're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's helpful. Yes. Uh, helps the medicine go down. Yeah. And uh, it's just seeing that it, the people actually do this. At first, it was like, this is just a scam. This is not going to work. Mm. Um, and then we took the class so many times at church. We took it like five times, mm-hmm. but we took it that many times because we needed the accountability from the people going through the same journey. And we took it so many times that a church was like, you should be the coordinators for a church. <laughs> I love it. And now we're coordinating the All class. All right. Yes. Thank you. Very <laughs> good. So the uh, former reluctant spouse is now a coordinator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. I like it. The that's, medicine went down. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, good for y'all. Okay, now that you've coordinated all these classes, you've been through classes, you paid off $133,000. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Mm, consistency. Yes. Mm-hmm. Consistency, and we started seeing the improvement, big steps, and we both were on the same boat. Yeah. At first, he, he was the one like, no, we're doing this, we're not buying that. So I, I hated all that process, but then until I saw how much minimal payment we're receiving on our credit cards and then he told me we could have spent all this money on traveling or on whatever we wanted to Mm. but we couldn't because we had to pay our debt Mm. so that that's when we both decided okay we're doing this as a team and and we just went off honestly also i want to say the every dollar bud uh app oh yes it helps because she can actually just it's just easier for her yes. just she she's just thought i can just drag and drop where it goes in the budget yeah, yes. I yeah. love it and you don't have you keep the budget easy and oh, you don't right. have to be good at math i, you know? I, 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 I had an excel spreadsheet and she hated that uh, i so. can't imagine oh, i can oh, imagine yeah. i love that i can't imagine an engineer with an excel spreadsheet <laughs> that's never happened before yeah. That is so good. So Way good. to go, you guys. Very, yeah. very well done. We're proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Who was cheering you on? Um, people our, in our church. Yes. Uh, and our family. And our family. Mm-hmm. Um, my in-laws, they also do. They Ramsey, they completely paid off the house. And um, we. Um, every time they went to advice, it was like, okay, you can do this. We did it. You can guys do it too. So family yeah. members in our church. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, a, a class that you said, Grace Woodland. Grace, Grace Woodland. Woodland. Yeah, that's a great place. Great. Way to go, guys. Excellent. Thanks, Grace Woodlands, yeah. for teaching the class. A <laughs> yes. couple right here has been Five changed. Times. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, you churches out there, this is what happens when you do this. Way to go, guys. Very, very well done. Good stuff. We've got the uh, Live and Give box for you. It's got the Baby Steps Millionaires book, uh, which you will be on your way to being one of those now soon. And, of course, the Total Money Makeover book. Give that away and get it moving for someone. And then another Financial Peace University membership, and you'll find somebody deserving that needs to go through the class, and you can help them as coordinators give that away. So we'll, we'll let you be the conduit on that. And uh, awesome. way to go, you guys. All right, let's bring the kiddos up. I want to know their names and ages. This is Ailed. She mm-hmm. is 11. Mm-hmm. And this is Olivia. She is 8. Ooh, beauties. All right. Excellent job. Very good. <laughs> that girl, Those girls look like their family tree was changed to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Saying. Very good. All right. <laughs> Luis and Delia, Alid? Alid. Alid. And Olivia in Houston, Texas, 133000 paid off in five years, making 64 to 135. Count it down. Right. Let's hear a debt free scream. <laughs> Three, two, one. We, we are debt free. Very cool stuff. (laughs) Very cool stuff. 
So, Jay, that was kind of you and Sam. I mean, you guys went through the class, then you ended up coordinating. How many classes did y'all coordinate at your church before you came here? Five. Five. Okay. Five classes. And that, look, if you're out there, you're walking through the baby steps, you're in baby step two, even if you're in three, four, five, or six, this is how you stay committed. And this is how you stay motivated is you, you do the stuff and you teach the stuff. And the more you teach the stuff, you, the more you want to do the stuff. Oh, by the way, coordinators go through the class free. Yeah. So if you just wanted to go Good through point. the class for free, start a class. That's a church. great idea. Yeah, that's a great you idea. You can do that. All the stuff's on our website. We'll show you how. Just go to RamseySolutions.com. And uh, the, the, the reason this class works is, we, A, we're teaching biblically-based common sense education and empowerment. I mean, it's God's, way, God's and Grandma's ways of handling money. Live mm-hmm. on less than you make. Live on a plan. Mm-hmm. Save and invest. Be outrageously mm-hmm. generous. Um, you know, understand what you're doing with real estate, with insurance, the two things that people do that mess them up all the time. Right. Make sure you've, th- this is the class that you should have been taught at like 15 years old. Oh, most 16 definitely. 16 years old. But no one was taught this. And so we've got an entire series of generations walking around in America that don't have basic personal finance info. That's so we're right. going to give you the information. Here's the thing. None of the information is going to go, is going to blow your mind. None no. of it's going to be like, Oh, I never heard that. That's so complicated. <laughs> it's going to be sense. like unbelievably easy to understand and hard to do because you got to control mm-hmm. the person in your mirror, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. I figured out if I could get the guy in my mirror to behave, he could be skinny and rich. Oh, yeah. You know, in my in my financial peace class, I'm finding right now we're talking about credit cards, Dave, and, and cutting up the credit cards. And people are they have lost touch with trusting themselves to stick to the budget. I trust that I can stick to the budget. I trust that I can handle my own money. I trust that I can do what I what I said I was going to do. And uh, that's what we teach you to do. We trust you to make a deal with yourself and keep your end of the bargain. That's it. And then the magic of the class, the, the big thing is the people in the class. Yes. The coordinators like Jade, the coordinators like that couple. Yeah. We're a community. And the, the, other, the other members of the class that are encouraging you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they'll hold you accountable, too. If you yep. want to do stupid, they'll argue with you. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're going to love you enough to, te- to help you stay on track. Oh, yeah. We hold each other accountable. I see Price and Veronica and Stacy twice there, a week. There you go. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Hey, get ready for the experience of a lifetime at the Smart Conference Weekend. It's going to be April 14th and 15th here in Nashville, the inaugural event of the brand new Ramsey Event Center. We're all really excited about it around here. It is a beautiful new building up on top of the hill here, and uh, we're looking forward to having uh, about 2,500 of our closest friends in for this. If you've never been to one of these live events, we go all out for our fans, and this one, big time we're going to because it's the first ever event. You're going to get a uh, uh, memorabilia, what do you call it, a uh, 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 Oh, my gosh. The ticket is a... Uh, oh, like a collectible? A collectible ticket, if you come to this one. It's pretty cool. Ramsey personalities, Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, George Camel, uh, Ken Coleman, Christina Ellis, Jade Warshaw, and myself are going to give you a plan to improve every area of your life. It is all day Saturday. But before Saturday, we're going to have a big bunch of stuff going on Friday. The live broadcast of the Ramsey Show. Uh, we've got some uh, Nashville... Uh, uh, yeah, a Nashville surprise. Some... Uh, some of the folks in the uh, music business okay. around here are going to stop by and hang out with us on uh, on Friday night and uh, after the event. So, I mean, after the uh, show, and then we'll, of course, do the Smart Conference all day on Saturday. Platinum and VIP tickets long ago sold out. You can still get general access tickets for $119. There's just a few of those left, though. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events today to get your Smart Conference weekend tickets. They are coming. Jason is in Napa. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Jade. 
I appreciate it. Sure. What's up? Um, looking for a little, what would Dave do? Um, married, I'm 47, wife is 37. We are on baby step six. We make about 195 combined. Our combined nest egg is about 285, and we are now looking to sell our condo and move into a house. Uh, we should be able to pull about 200 from the sale to put towards the new purchase. My question is, we have another non-retirement brokerage account with about 170 in it. Would you pull that out and apply it toward the down payment as well? I would have already if you're in baby step six. That's what you should have already done. You should have already gotcha. paid it down on the condo. Gotcha. It was hers pre-marriage. Um, but are yeah, we gonna okay. are we married? Are we staying married? Oh, absolutely. Okay, no, I don't <laughs> give a crap about pre-marriage then. It's now ours. ours. Understood. Yes, understood. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, definitely, definitely. Okay. And it sounds like you're going to move up in house, and we are. Your, your new payment's going to be something you can pay off how quickly? Uh, we are looking at twelve to fifteen year payoff. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're going to be paying it off faster than uh, anticipated. You put it on uh, a fifteen-year fix. Year put it on a fifteen-year yeah. fix where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, and I'd be aiming at paying it off sub ten. That would be aggressive, and we will look at that for yeah. sure. Uh, well, Ooh, you're, if, your it's aggressive there. If, you're, mm -hmm. if your income doesn't go up, but your income's going to go up, so it's not really that aggressive. Yeah, so we are on that track, uh, as well as being retired uh, or planning to retire about that same time. So pay off the house and retire and live happily ever after. Ding, ding. Love Sounds it. like a plan, brother. Thank you for calling in. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. So baby step like six that. works where you don't have any money anywhere except your emergency fund and money you're saving to pay for Christmas. Yes. And... We don't have side brokerage accounts while we still have a mortgage. Yeah, there's that. And I'm also thinking about, I kind of wanted to hit on this briefly, which is the, it's our money deal. You yeah, know? Go, go ahead if, and hit on if, that. If you've you got, that. if you're married, the money is ours. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. But if you're married, go ahead and combine your finances. I tell folks all the time you need to do a vocab rehab, which is basically taking the words me, my, his, hers out of the money conversation. And it's ours. We need to get on a budget. Our money needs to, you know, it's we and our. And that that counts for the money and that counts for the debt. So that's just a quick little kick in the pants for you guys. Is that a jadeism, a vocab rehab? That's a jadeism right there. Vocab rehab. The vocab rehab. <laughs> I'm going with that. I like it. It's got, you know. We're going to have to start collecting we these jadisms, James. Jade I think they might be valuable someday. Well, hopefully so. you guys remember that. So go home and tell your spouse. I heard some crazy lady on the Ramsey show, and she said, you can't you can't say anymore, you're spending. <laughs> and that's your debt. She said it's our debt. And you would be right about that. So go home and start some arguments. And you know, uh, One of the most poetic things that I've ever heard about that that I just love is and it kind of it, it harkens back to yesteryear when, uh, <laughs> when some things were a lot worse and some things were a lot better. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it's good that we have penicillin and it's good we have indoor plumbing now. But <laughs> right. um, so we don't want to harken back to yesteryear for everything. But uh, yesteryear was good in the old marriage <laughs> vows in the Book of Common Prayer. I mean, we all kind of know the vow, the for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, right. uh, until death do us part, right? That's kind of that still shows up in a lot of marriage vows even today. But the old Book of Common Prayer was, and unto thee all my worldly goods I pledge. Yes. There it is. It becomes ours. Yes. I don't get to just keep this ours. little thing to the side. We don't. We are now French. Yeah. We, we. Yeah. That's and it. where your money is, your heart is also. So I would have a hard time with my spouse saying yes to all of this, but no to the money. Because I'm wondering, is your heart with me? Yeah. Apparently well, not. Rachel Cruz catches hell on uh, Instagram and everywhere else. Anytime she talks about having a joint checking account, but she says, you know, if you can share a bed, surely you can share a checking account. Surely. You know, surely. Don't call me Shirley. All right. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Kathy's in Pensacola. Hey, Kathy, what's up? 
All right. So I'm wondering if in our situation, it makes sense for me to take my Social Security early in order to pay off our mortgage. Oh, I like it. I like your mortgage being paid off. Uh, yeah. You can't you can't pay it off early without doing that. No. You don't have any money. No, we have money. Uh, How much so, money do you have? Um, cash or everything. Everything. <laughs> Um, retirement, cash, equity, everything is, uh, right at a million. And how much is your mortgage? 113. Why don't you just pay off your stupid mortgage? Do you have well, $113,000 you can get your hands on out of a million? Yes. yes. Pay it off. You don't have to mess up your well, social security to do that. A large portion of our cash is a pers- personal injury money that I received and is intended to make up for the loss of income long-term that I had from my inability to work. Mm-hmm. I'm currently I'm currently on disability. We bought ONOC policies a long time ago. That will end. How old are you? At 66, 62. I'm 62. Okay. But you have a million dollars. And so you, you, right now, yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, no, but, well, I have it, yes. But again, have you, is it invested? Retirement. Yes, about okay. four and a quarter is retirement, about 275 is equity, and... Equity in have, what? Equity in, equ- in in mutual funds? In the home. Oh, in the home, in okay. The home. All right. And then so we Pay have, off your mortgage. Um, pay off your mortgage and make sure your personal injury money and your retirement are all invested in good mutual funds, which should average well above 10% the market has since it began. Okay, so we don't have enough money to pay off the mortgage unless we use the injury money. So what? Pay off the mortgage. <laughs> the injury money's all, the injury's done. I mean, you you got it's over. It's not over. You're still suffering. I'm not making fun of you, but th- that money is there to invest for you to live off of the income. Also, if you use some of it to pay off your mortgage, you need less income to live because you don't have a mortgage anymore. Mm-hmm. This is true, and and the, my hesitance on that has been twofold. One is the amount of our mortgage is only about six hundred and forty dollars a month. The P and I. Yeah, but the you're P&I, getting ready to take out your Social back. Security early to pay it off because you're acting like you're a broke person because you pigeonhole this money emotionally because it's associated with your injury. The inj- the the money is no longer associated with the injury. The money's just now part of your net worth that you are going to spend the rest of your life living on, and you should use it to pay off your mortgage today. I hope I wasn't unclear. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jake Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Greg is with us in Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Greg, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me. I sold my place in California, ended up with $600,000 in cash. And there's this beautiful penthouse condo in Pompano Beach I'm looking at. And I want you to tell me if it's the dumbest thing in the world to buy it. I love Pompano Beach. Can I just tell you that's my old hood? So I'm just throwing that out there. Beautiful place. Yes. Yeah, it is. Well, the thing is, it's uh, $1,250 for the maintenance fee is the killer and then i'd have to maybe get a little bit of a mortgage above the six hundred thousand i got for cash from my california place they bought it for 750 in other words i have that maintenance fee and who knows there might be some ridiculous assessment for say forty thousand dollars or something you know so i'd be dealing with that but i am single with no children 
And I uh, wonder if it's a fun, great move. I mean, it's a wonderful place. Or if it's just stupid. What's your household income? Uh, I, I'd say now I'm making about uh, between fifty, seventy-five thousand a year. Sixty mm-hmm. years old. Okay. All right. So here's, I mean, I, I want you in five years to pay off whatever mortgage it is, or three years. Can you do that? Right. Yeah. You don't want to be. Uh, you don't want to be sixty-five. I, think I can't do that. Yeah. You don't want to be sixty-five with a mortgage and a twelve thousand right. dollar or a twelve hundred dollar maintenance fee. Right. As long as you're able to get it to where that that mortgage with all the fees included, all the taxes, all the fees included, is no more than 25% of your monthly take home. Are you able to do it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Well, I have to add that up. I have to think about that. Yeah, I think think you – but it really needs to be more than that because you got to pay – you got to just say you're going to take out like a $150,000 mortgage and you got – you know, like – you need to be putting forty or fifty thousand dollars on this thing ever ever in licks. I mean, you need to be hitting it hard because because yeah, I want you debt free. Hard, How I want the I don't want the condo with a dad gum loan on it when you go into retirement, right? Right. So you got five years to clear this. So thirty thousand a year yeah. for five years is one hundred and fifty. Okay. Can I tell? I got a couple million bucks I've saved up too. I've got investment. Well, there's a detail you <laughs> left out. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, you didn't ask. I like to. I wanted to ask. I wanted to answer the question. <laughs> you like living life on the edge. I'm getting played here. <laughs> go get the condo. Hey, dude, no, go no. get the condo and write a check for it. Don't take out a mortgage. Just pay cash, man. Just pay cash for it and take out a mortgage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Caroline's in Cincinnati. Hey, Caroline, how are you? Good, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I am a 23-year-old nursing student. I live on my own. I rent an apartment, and I'm on baby step two currently. Um, I am $11,000 in credit card debt, and I'm also currently taking out student loans of $3,000 a semester, and a 1000 of that is to help me pay my steep car payment. Why are you and still taking out should- student loans? She's still in nursing What's school. That? You're doing that for nursing school? What's that? You're paying yes, student loans school. with nursing school. Is there any way that you yes. can cash flow nursing school? Um, I started it that way, but um, with my income, it just wasn't working. Now, what do you owe on your car? I owe 10000 Okay. So you're taking out student loans to pay for school, and you said a thousand of it is going towards your car. Yes, the yeah. student loans is six k a year. Don't do it. I I need we need to stop the bleeding on this, and I'm telling you this as somebody who did that. Really? I was a I was a person who I was a little bit dumber. I had a full scholarship, and I took out student loans to fund my lifestyle. And part of that was taking out money to buy a quote cash vehicle. I took student loans out, took the cash and bought a vehicle. Don't do it because you're going to have to pay it back and you're going to have to pay it back with interest. Let's try to slow down the schooling so that you can pay for it in cash and work your way through. Caroline, how long before you graduate? Three years. Three years? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And how are you covering all of it? You said you're covering all of it, but $3,000 and some of the $3,000 is going to the car. So Mm -hmm. you're covering most of it, it sounds like, already. How are you doing that? Um, I do have some scholarships and financial aid. You're so close. The two, I mean, the two thousand. It's you're so close. You're within range of being able to pay cash for this. You're yeah. right. If you didn't have a car payment and you made a little bit more money, you would almost be there, wouldn't you? Yeah, I make thirty k a year mm-hmm. currently. So, yeah. What are you doing? I'm a manager at a restaurant. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Number one, your goal is a great goal, a nursing degree, fabulous line of work, great humans do that. And there's always great career opportunity. You got the opportunity to make a lot of money with this degree. So I want you to get the degree. So what I don't want you to do is like Jade said, I don't want you to go out and get the degree and then have this anchor tied around your neck Mm -hmm. when you walk down to get your diploma okay how much student loan debt do you have today 
Um, I've only been taking out student loans for one semester, so just about 3000 3000 And how much credit card debt do you have today? 11000 How did you cover it before in the other semesters? Um, I was working more. I was working over 40 hours, but that's just not possible with the workload of school. I would consider, is there possible that you can pull back on your hours of school so that you can work? No, not the nursing degree is a set or degree. Or it's it's set like it's that. A set okay. syllabus, yeah. You're not you're not allowed to move your syllabus around. You have to work it exactly like laid out, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna if I if I were in your shoes, what would I do? Okay. It is good. Listen, you have to choose which thing's gonna suck. Okay. Okay. You're either gonna be tired. Or you're going to have student loan debt, and later on you're going to be tired. Oof. Okay? Yeah. So it's, you know, you might as well decide which one, because one of these is going to suck. I would prefer to get it out of the way now if it's me. Um, I shouldn't tell a nursing student this, but I'd, you know, rip the Band-Aid off fast guy, okay? <laughs> so uh, I want to get it over with. And so if I'm you, I'm going to sell the car, move down into a hoopty, and I'm going to take all the hours it takes to pay cash for this so that I don't make a bigger mess. If you don't pay down on anything until you get out, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you adding any more to it because you're tired. And I know it's hard. Your, your curriculum is tough. Your studies are tough. Working is tough. I'm not saying it's easy, but neither is paying off $30,000 worth right. of student loan debt later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's a slow burn. That accumulates fast. You're doing you're doing the right thing. I know that you can do this. And I would also poke around the nursing school and ask one more round. Where what else can I get for some more scholarships? There you go. How much other aid can I get? I need some help here. I'm dying over here. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. When was the last time you were excited about a Monday? What if instead of waking up exhausted, you felt exhilarated? You can't wait to get to work because it's another day to fulfill your passion, your dream job. In a world where bare minimum Monday has taken the place of quiet quitting, in a world where we are, have a group of morons who are now worshiping the art of mediocrity, maybe you ought to plug into something where you can reach for excellence, mm. where you can uh, actually get fired up and wired up about your life again and go be somebody instead of trying to manage average. No, nope, let's don't do that. Let's don't do bare minimum Monday. That makes me sick just saying it. Get a little throw up in my throat right then. Whew. Bare minimum Monday? That's just awful. It's just gross. So this is why career expert and Ramsey personality Ken Coleman created the Get Clear Assessment to help you discover your top talents, passions, and a clear mission statement that will help you find the work the world needs you to do. And after taking the quick assessment, you'll get a custom report with everything you need to take that first step toward a career that you love, a meaningful career that you will plug into and leave it all on the field, baby. Hey, join, start your journey by taking the Get Clear assessment at RamseySolutions.com slash Get Clear. Dale is with us in Nashville. Hi, Dale. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, sure. listen, I have had to sell my mom's house in order to pay for her assisted living. So I've got the money just sitting in a checking account, and I need to do something with it. Now, I know you're not a big fan of CDs, but, you know, short term, I, I don't know if there's a better alternative. There's Can not, you help me? There's not much better. Okay. Um, it's not going to make much difference, though. How much money is it? Uh, 260000 Okay. And how much is her care costing? Uh, 66000 a year. Okay. How old is she? 90. Mm. How's she doing? She's in a memory care unit. Um, you know, at 90 years old, she has the typical, you know, high blood pressure, heart disease, cholesterol. Yeah. Uh, 
But other than that, she's doing quite well. Okay. I mean, she can carry on a conversation with you, but she just doesn't have really much memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, I'm sorry for what you're walking just, through. Thank you for being a good man taking care of your mother. Um, well, I'm just trying to be a good steward of yeah, her money. Yeah. So I'm if you, trying to figure out what's going to be best. Yeah. So if you make 1% more on it, you're going to make $2,000 more. Okay. Okay. And um, and so if you can get a CD that's making 2%, you're going to make $5,000 more. So $5,000 within you have 260000 in the bank does not change the equation much. Does mm -hmm. that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, the uh, uh, yes, go ahead and put it in a CD uh, because that's better than it's be better. Five, it's five thousand dollars more than you would have had. Yeah. Yeah. What's your bank quoting yeah. you on a CD? Um, five for twelve months, five point four five. That's good. That's yeah. Good. See, that's five percent more than you would have had. Yeah, I would do that. Yes, definitely. But, and okay. then, you know, okay. and, and, you know, lock up all but 60,000 bucks of it, right? So put 200 of it in that. Yeah, I was, well, I, I didn't know whether to do it in a mix of doing, like, part of it, the money in a 12-month, part of it in a nine-month, part of it in a six-month in case, uh, heaven help me, that if something should come up and I'm needing to liquidate earlier than 12 months and then i would have the six months and have that at maturity yeah. if you have to liquidate earlier than 12 months it means you just don't get all the interest they yeah, don't take I'm they don't take any of your principal so right, it right. would just be you get less than right. five so it's not the yeah, end of the my, world my, yeah my goal is just to keep uh, keep it until maturity and i'm yeah. going to try to keep enough i'd put at least 100 i'd put yeah. at least 150 in for a year at five uh, for 150 for what for a year at five percent yeah oh, okay at least oh, okay and that okay. Le that leaves you 90 yeah. grand 90 grand will cover any contingencies and if you don't quite get the five because something happens and you end up liquidating sooner then so what uh -huh. it's not the end of the world okay you're not okay. going to lose any money Okay. Yeah, I, I can't afford that. Well, I mean, that, that, so, yeah, the, the point is we're not going to uh, – you're not going to make substantial money on this with this type of thing, but it is a, it's better than, mm -hmm. than leaving it sitting there making 1% in a stupid savings account, right? So, yeah, if you can get five in this current market, that's a good thing. I'd step on that. And um, I per personally would probably put 200 in there, but at least 150 because uh, the 60 is one year's worth of expenses. Mm -hmm. And then, again, if you liquidate early, you don't lose anything except a portion of the returns. You lose none of the principal. So it's not they, uh, it's not that big a deal, really. Uh, it's just a, we're going to take a, sh take a run at it here. So for somebody listening who's going through something similar, at what point, Dave, would you invest that money beyond a CD? If mom was younger... Where I uh, generally investing means I'm going to mutual funds, yeah. and that means I need a, a, a ninety seven percent of the five year periods in history in the stock market have made money. Mm -hmm. So if you're in good mutual funds, you leave it alone five years, the ninety seven percent of the time you will make money. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, only about sixty four percent, sixty seven percent of the three year periods make money. So um, I put money in mutual funds that I'm going to leave alone a year. Mm -hmm. but And I might lose some money after a year if I want to move it over into some real estate. But you but can stomach I that. I can afford, I can mathematically afford that hit. It doesn't affect my life. But he can't afford to lose 26000 right. of this 260. He can't lose 10%. Mm -hmm. would be a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and chasing 10%, you know, so we don't want to take that risk here. Uh, but if, if, uh, if mom was, uh, in really, really, really good health, mm -hmm. uh, had, uh, uh, some early signs of Alzheimer's and was in nursing care and she was 62. Right. Now we've got a life expectancy that is much longer statistically speaking. Exactly. Um, and we might say, okay, some of this money we could park for five years. And we yeah. could take a chance with it and make, you know, some good returns, like instead of 5, 10, 11, 12, something like mm -hmm. that on a mutual fund. So, but yeah, if you're not going to leave it alone five years, we call it saving. Right. If you're going to leave it alone five years, it's investing. Right. And so that's the, 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 
spell weather that we use around here. And, and so what we're doing in, with Dale is we're helping him save mm -hmm. some of his mom's money in the best possible savings account. But that's not really investing right at that stage. So Very good, cool. good questions. Debbie is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Debbie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave and Jane, I'm so glad to talk to you and um, got a big argument with my husband. So I'm going to go with your answer. So I hope it's a good one. <laughs> um, we are going from two incomes to one income. So for the first time, we're really going to try and set a budget. My husband thinks the way you figure out a budget is look at what we've spent over the last six to 12 months and then that's how we figure out our budget going forward. Whereas I figure, no, we just have to look at what our what our monthly income is going to be, and then we have to give each category a dollar amount and go from there because it doesn't really matter what we spent before because we're not going to have that same income. Well, you're, you understand? I asking? do. I do. You're you're kind of both right. Mm -hmm. I, I get what he's saying. He's if you've never done a budget before. You don't know what it is that you're spending. So, yeah, going back and looking at past bank statements and seeing what did we spend on groceries? How much are we really spending on gas? Going back to see that is is a great place yeah, to let's start. Say, let's say you spent uh, $300 on gas and nothing has changed. And you do a new budget with your new income. And you go, we need to spend 150 on gas. You're not going to you make can't. it. That's not going to work. You're basically got to chop it in half. So, I mean, but if you looked at your old budget and go, well, that's changed because, you know, we're not driving to work anymore. One of us isn't working. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, gas bill's going to go down. Yeah. Then you can make adjustments for that. But he, he, you're right, Jade. Both of you are right. You should take your current income and spend it all on paper before the month begins. That's mm -hmm. called a zero-based budget. And a good indicator of what you're going to need for that is what you used to do adjusting for whatever has changed right since then but uh, or what you're willing to change since then that mm -hmm. kind of thing what you're able to change and adjust since then so they're both right this is the ramsey show Thank you for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Rick and Tiffany are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing awesome. Doing awesome. <laughs> so good to have you guys. Where do you live? Just outside of Concord, New Hampshire. Oh, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? We've paid off $176,353.85. Love it. How long did this take? About 59 months. 59 months. And your range of income during that time? Uh, range from 83000 to 140000 Cool. What do you all do for a living? I'm a uh, self-employed. I design specialized refrigeration equipment. And Tiffany is? I do accounting for a nonprofit in human services. Excellent. Very good. Cool. What kind of debt was the 176000 <laughs> <laughs> Well, the first 50000 or so was a couple of small student loans, mm -hmm. um, a, uh, two cars, and um, a credit card. Mm -hmm. And Kind of normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... We paid off our house. Yay! <laughs> Looking at weird people. Okay, so tell us the story and tell us the story on the live debt free or die t shirts. I, mean, I love the t shirts. <laughs> uh, we're from New Hampshire, and that is the state motto is live free or die. Right. Uh -huh. So we just modified it a little bit for the show. I love that. <laughs> live debt free or die. Exactly. It's I almost like it. a threat. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we almost did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what got you guys going 59 months ago? What's your story? Well, several years ago, some idiot told me that all of my credit card debt and everything that I had before we got married was my responsibility and she wouldn't have to deal with it if I died. And a bigger idiot believed it. 
Um, so I went on just keeping on going until I found out that that wasn't true and that I, if I died, I would be leaving her with that debt. So we, uh, we thought about it. I, my credit union had a special for consolidating loans that they would do everything in three years. I said, no, I want to do it in two. So we paid off, the credit card was at 32000 I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. And we did that in about 18 months. And uh, Tiffany brought up the uh, money Yeah, the total again. money makeover. <laughs> again, and uh, we had talked about it a long time ago. We heard it from our church about financial peace, and I was young and stupid and said, why am I paying $100 to learn how to save money? Um, you're, not the, I was you're just, not the only person who's ever said that. You know. <laughs> I decided I was just stupid. That's all. <laughs> well, Tiffany, how did you get him to realize that he was being stupid? <laughs> In your own words, Rick. In your own words. <laughs> well, I just saw how dedicated he was. Um, and just to give you a, a little backstory, there is 18 years difference between us. So She's, she's a little older. <laughs> <laughs> so for him to have it on his heart that he that he felt bad to, you know, um, to leave me with a debt if anything were to happen, although he's in much better shape than I am. He just went out for a seven mile run this Ooh. morning. <laughs> there you go. Um, but so I was I, I'm not one that likes clutter in my house. So I was doing some research and came up with the minimalists. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And you come hand in hand with them, Dave. Yeah, they're good, they're good <laughs> friends of ours, yeah. Yeah, so um, it was um, New Year's Eve, I think, uh, weekend or something like that, and we had a long weekend, and I I took the book out um, from the library, and I'm not a very fast reader. I read the whole book in like two days, um, but I didn't want... It's not like it's a literary work of art, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I didn't really want to push it uh, on him yet so um, I just saw some things that changed in him as well because this really this journey had changed our marriage um, it increased our faith um, we went from paying like maybe like an offering to our church and I'm you know he brought up to me I, I really want to start tithing and mm. that was huge um, so we do a lot of traveling. Uh, my dad lives in South Carolina, which is a 17-hour drive, and he does all the driving. Um, and so, so you're the DJ. <laughs> so I put the podcast. Ah, on. Uh, I just kind of trapped it in. in the car, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out. You're stuck with Dave. Yeah, and yep. uh, he he was enjoying it. I mean, that's a 17-hour drive each way. We'd go twice Ooh. a year. So <laughs> 17 <laughs> hours a Dave. Yeah. 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 More day than I want. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just want to say too that God is just provided for us, and and the more that we saw that um, that we, we were giving, it. the more that mm -hmm. we'd get back. And uh, mm -hmm. it's like I don't understand this. And uh, and the more you start doing smart stuff, the more He blesses you. Yes. When you're yeah. faithful in the little things, he gives you more to manage. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, he had a great uh, sales year um, back in 2019, and he knew it was my desire to finish my degree. It's, uh, I finished my associate's degree, there's probably a picture there, um, in 28 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just something it. that for my children, I just wanted, uh, and my grandchildren, you know, to mm -hmm. see that. And mm -hmm. it was just important for me and my mom too, Amen. and dad, um, who are still with me. And, um, but anyway, so he's like, you know, I had a good year. I mean, let's pause the journey, still pay, you know, at that point we we're paying, we had already paid off all our consumer debt, um, but let's, you know, kind of pause and pay a little bit, you know, do the house payment, but get this um, degree done. Mm -hmm. So I gave my um, notice to my work, January 2020, I gave him three months oh, notice. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so March 10th, I think was my last day. Talk about perfect time. Yeah. Woo -woo. Right in time for COVID. Right. But, I, and Rick can explain about his job, but I mean, yeah. we should have been afraid, but God, that was like the, probably one of the best years you yeah. had financially because of your essential work. So. Right. Yeah. It's essential business. So we kept in business. We kept producing as best we could and, and people kept asking for more and more and more and 
It worked out just well. She was able to go back to school and finish her degree. Mm-hmm. And then we finished paying off the house. Yeah. And then we Way finished paying go. off the house. Love and it. came in. And, <laughs> and a side now note. Go ahead. A side note, too, is I've been self-employed most of my life. And finally, two weeks before I turned 66, I opened my first IRA. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Why yeah. not? Yeah. yeah. It's all Why part not? of the program, right? That's right. <laughs> well, congratulations, Thank you guys. You. How's it feel to be free? Oh, wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, because one of the things we gave up was um, we love to cruise. Mm-hmm. Um, we were doing a couple of cruises a year. We gave that up, um, so we were able to do our first uh, debt-free cruise. Yeah. Oh, cool! Wow! Yeah, just a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Where'd you go? To the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Hey, it's we've great. got the Live and Give box for you. That's the awesome. Baby Steps Millionaire's book. Uh, I got a feeling you're there. <laughs> uh, how much is in your all's retirement accounts? Well, it's fluctuated because, you know, probably about 75000 I put okay. it in just and, in and time for it to go house, down. What's the house worth? I looked it up today, 360000 Okay, right. so you're on your way. You're yes. on your way then to Baby Steps Millionaires. Yeah. We've got that book for you. We've got Thank the Total you. Money Makeover book for you, mm-hmm. Financial Peace University membership. All of those, use them or give them. Mm-hmm. Use will. them or give them. That's what yeah. they're for. And God bless y'all. Well, way to go, heroes. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. You took control of your life. Well done. Rick and Tiffany Concord, New Hampshire. $176,000 paid off in 59 months, making 83 to 140. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt free. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Live free or die. Live debt free or die. I love it. Yeah, I'll take the uh, New Hampshire state motto, <laughs> make a little adjustment. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have a new motto here. That's I like love it. it. Live debt free or die. Whew. Man, serious. Hey, it's a good way to live, though. It what is. Do you, a, it's how, the, how do you celebrate? You go on a cruise. That's perfect. I look, like it. And it's debt free. It doesn't follow you home afterwards. Love it. This is the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Matthew 12, 36. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that one. After doing all these hours of talk radio, oh my Lord, give me grace, Jesus. <laughs> oh my. Uh, is it better to offer no excuse than a bad one, George Washington? Hmm. Interesting. You know, Dave, I think you could be one of those Bible readers on the Bible app. One of the voices, you know, you've got like Morgan Freeman, the hillbilly version, <laughs> James Earl Jones, <laughs> the I Dave Ramsey version. I could version. do the uh, hillbilly redneck version of the Bible. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one I would do. Yeah. I'd like to take a poll on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. I can do it. Yeah, like read the whole. Nah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a lot of work. Don't, don't sign me up for uh, something yeah. here. What are you with? Are you some publisher or something? I'm just are you? curious. Some people might like it. Yeah. Um, All right, Aiden is with us in St. Louis. Aiden, get me out of this. How can we help? (laughs) Doing all right. How's it going? Better than I deserve, man. How can we help? Yeah, so um, I took a weekend trip to Texas, and I messed up and bought a car while I was there. Were you drinking? Um, (laughs) No, I just, I I saw the car before I went down there, and it's my dream car, and I just messed up and ended up doing it now. I'm can't get the thought out of my head that I could be using that money for a down payment on a house. How, how, what car was it, and how much did it cost you? Uh, the car was 20000 and it's a 2013 Nissan 370Z. Whew. What's the payment on that? Uh, my total payment works out to around 450 a month. Okay. 
And what were you driving before? Uh, a 2002 Honda Accord with 275,000 miles, and it's broke down on me like four times in the past two months. <laughs> How'd you get to Texas? Um, we, I just went with my buddy. Okay, so you still mm -hmm. got the Accord? Yeah. Okay. How old are you? 19. Okay. Um, and, and what's your question, sir? Just don't i just don't know if i should keep the car and deal with it because i and pay the stupid taxes you say because i know i messed up or what to do from here because i i mean i can afford to, i mean i can afford the payment and you know between me and my fiance we make enough money where it's not exactly a big financial strain on us but i just can't shake that idea of the down payment on a house there's not an us you're not married yeah well so we get married uh in a month from now oh okay Ooh. So you just saddled her with a car payment Oof. instead of a house. Yeah. I bet, I bet she's happy. She kind of told me she thought that I deserve to have something at least kind of nice, but she said she's gonna we're going to work as a, on what? it as a team together. Yeah. What's your income now, and what's your income going to be when you're married? So my income now is about 3500 bucks a month um, through my night job, and then I just got my real estate license at the end of last year. Um, and then she makes around three three thousand dollars a month, and so it'll be around sixty five hundred bucks a month without real without anything from real estate. Okay. Um. Wow. Can I ask what other debt you have in between with her as well? Neither of us have any other debt other than this. I've got. Um, I personally, I have. Um, a little bit of cash, about around three three months worth of expenses. I've got six thousand in a Roth, twenty five hundred in mutual funds, and this is like my first ever mess up, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then she has around twenty k cash with no investment. Okay, I, I want you to tell her I said this. Okay. Okay. You don't deserve the car. She's wrong. If you deserved it, you would have had the money to pay for it. You don't deserve $450 car payments. You're not that bad a guy. Yeah. You don't deserve hell. Okay? So I'm not going to, you know, no. You know you deserve something when you have saved the money and you pay for it. Until then, you don't deserve it. That was a, that's yeah. a childish statement. And if you, if you repeat that statement over and over, you're going to be broke your whole life. Yeah. I deserve it. No, that's McDonald's. I deserve a break today. You're going to deserve a Big Mac? That's the best you can do? Ugh. <laughs> Seriously. So uh, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes is I would sell the car mm -hmm. because you have cost your yeah. family the down payment, and I would get rid of it. And you made a mistake. You impulsed, and mm -hmm. um, uh, you made a uh, – and, and the other thing, Aiden, that uh, I do – when I pay stupid taxes, I want to do an autopsy and a CSI on the situation and go, okay, what was going on that allowed me to be this stupid? Was and, it was it your I buddy think, with I you? I, was, I think I was just with my friends and I yeah. just really wanted, I yeah. just wanted a nicer car because my car what, is you know, down what, so what, much on What me process and, is going on in your life? What process is going on in your spirit, in your intellect, in your decision-making paradigm that allows you to make this dis bad decision? I, you know, you want to know that so you don't do it again, right? Yeah. Because I you, think it's, if you I impulse $20,000 items and your fiancé says I, you deserve it, you're, you're going to be broke your whole life, mm -hmm. man. And so that. the bad news is you made a mistake. The good news is you're only 19, and you have the whole rest of your life to never impulse a car again. Yeah. You might do some other dumb things, but let's take that one off the table. This is the last time you're going to do this one. Check. Never do that one again. Because mm -hmm. it's going to cost you some money by the time you get out of it. You're probably not even going to get out of it without writing a check. Right. And so Oof. it's going to set you back. But I, I, I wouldn't – I would get rid of it because of how it occurred. Well, he's never going to be able to – even – he's never going to be able to enjoy the car because of the way he feels about how he purchased it. He's, it's, it's always going to be yeah, that he, burden to him. Feels like he's got a financial hangover. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd sell it too. I mean, n- numbers wise, they could probably make it work, but it's, I think it's a principle here and it's honestly, it's how they're setting their marriage off. And that's not the foot I'd want to set it off. I, I, I think I'm admitting that what I did was a bad idea yeah. by getting rid of it. I mm-hmm. think by keeping it in some way, you're endorsing the saying some portion of the decision was a good decision. Right. Right. And honestly, none of it was. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's not a really about the car and it's not even about $20,000 with their, you know, with their $80,000 income. It's more about, I've got to make sure my brain never works this way again because it didn't work well. Yeah. When I was doing and, this. And you're the sum of the people you hang around. I just want to throw that out there. Um, you, it sounded like whoever he was with is an had idiot. an influence on him being an idiot. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, if you're gonna listen, if if you run around with your drinking buddies, you're gonna have a drinking problem. Heck yeah! This is how it works. I mean, this is not, you become who you hang around That's with. That's right. So you just gotta you gotta watch this stuff. It's uh, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm uh, I I want to be hard not on you, Aiden, because you made a mistake that almost everyone in America has made at one time or right. another in their lives. Mm-hmm. But I do want to be very very hard on. The actual event, I want to be very hard on the way your brain was working during that event so that you don't re- repeat. Right. And you don't have to live with this kind of pain. Uh, that You know, when Sharon and I went broke, Aiden, and we lost everything, we were 28 years old, and we had a brand new baby and a toddler and a marriage hanging on by a thread. One of the benefits of having gone broke at that age and lost a million dollar net worth, lost $4 million worth of real estate, is... I got the opportunity to repeatedly do what you're doing or what I'm asking you to do, and that's do an autopsy on my stupidity. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, what killed the patient? (laughs) Why did he die? You know, is it what's the comorbidity? I mean, we know it was COVID, but what's the comorbidity, right? So comorbidity. It had to be COVID. It's everything's COVID, but we, you know. But he. But it's a. Sum never mind total the fact he got things. ran over by a car right. when he had COVID. That, but he died of COVID. You know. But let's really get to looking at what really, really happened here with the patient. Why did the patient expire? Why did I make this stupid butt decision? And I had to unpack that. And I spent actually uh, a year uh, or more unpacking that, so that I never went back again. Right. And thus was born what we teach every day. I love that. So there you go. Go through the process, people. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.